What's up Karate Nerds? In today's video we're gonna have a look at practical applications also known as Bunkai in Japanese. And we're gonna do one for each of the Pinan also known as the Heian Katas. Now of course there are unlimited applications to the techniques that you use in these Kata. So we're just gonna do one sequence of each Kata so that you can learn how to use these moves in an actual self-defense situation. Keep watching. All right, so let's start with the first one. We're gonna work off of the first moves you do in the kata, where you step to the side, you do some kind of deflection, or maybe it's a release from a wrist grab, you follow through with a punch, and then you do a takedown. And naturally, these moves look a little bit different in different styles, but I'm gonna try to stick to the original Okinawan execution of these kata. So, the way you might end up in such a position where somebody is holding your wrists is the first thing you need to think about because usually nobody will start grabbing your wrists. So how did you get there? Maybe you did a bear hug, maybe you were grappling and I try to go for your groin. So you slide down to defend yourself and voila, we're now in this position. Now I can pick right side or left side in the kata, we do it in both directions. So I'm just gonna cross my arms slide to the side and release my hand so that I can BAM smack my opponent straight into the face and I crash into him and step through with this leg which gives me sort of a takedown advantage as well and then the next move is when I turn around and do a low block so I'm just gonna grab my opponent either here around the mouth uh, on the front doesn't matter the hair maybe wherever you can grab because there are no rules when it comes to self-defense unless you break the law, right? So, you grab somewhere, you turn around, and you spin them down. And that is my low block. Let's look at that again from another angle. In fact, it doesn't have to be from wrist grabs, it could be from a punch. Just give me a punch. Here, I just slide to the side and do the same kind of evading motion, which looks like a hammer fist strike, but in fact, it might be a block. I step through and I smack my opponent in the face. And now, look, he has his other leg to the front. It doesn't matter because you need to be able to adapt to each situation. And my fist slides here now. So I'm just gonna go like this instead for my low block and step around and pull. There's a famous saying by Gichin Funakoshi that kata is one thing, but a real fight is another. And this means that you need to be able to adapt each move from the kata according to each situation. Okay, so let's move on to the next Pinan Kata. By the way, in more modern Japanese styles, these kata are known as Heian, but the original pronunciation is Pinan, which has Chinese origins and actually means to stay safe. And the modern Heian terminology means peace and tranquility. These kata were actually created by Itosu Anko, who's known as the grandfather of modern karate. And he made these kata as he spearheaded the campaign to introduce karate into the school system in Okinawa. And later, one of his students, Funakoshi Gichin, who helped spread karate in mainland Japan, changed the name to Heian to make it more digestible for regular Japanese people. Now we're gonna focus on the Shuto, the knife or sword hand techniques. So, let's say somebody swings at you. You wanna move back and cover up. Natural, responsive, defensive reaction, right? Again, I cover up, but this is not a good position. So, I circle around and I BAM! Deliver my own Shuto, my sword hand. Not just using the hand, but the whole arm, which is the old way of using the move. Straight into the neck, using my whole body behind it. Now, it could end here. And of course, we do this on both sides in the kata. Let's try the other side. Defend, and then I step in. But of course, look at his natural reaction. He wants to defend himself. So let's use that response for my next move. Again, you attack me. I defend, I step in and you block. So what I do is that now I slide down and I grab your hand, your palm, your fingers, whatever I can grab. 
I stretch it out and I go for the third one. One, two, three shuto techniques in the kata, bam. And then of course from here we have a nukite, a spear hand technique. So what I do is I step behind you and I execute a basic trip or a takedown for what looks like the spear hand technique, which of course is not penetrating your opponent's ribs and ripping his heart out, but actually a takedown technique. Let's move on to the third Pinan Kata, Sandan. Now, a lot of people like to use applications for these weird double blocks in the beginning this way. Give me a double strike. Ha! And then another. Ha! Okay, but we all know that this is not really practical, right? So how could you use these types of movements where I'm pushing down with one arm and I'm pulling up with the other arm. Well, have you ever seen an arm drag where you push down and you pull up this way? Maybe it's more of a grappling based technique instead. So that's what we're gonna use. So let's say we're in a grappling type situation and I find a wrist. I push it down and I pull up with the other hand. And can you see his natural reaction this way? He wants to move with the force so I don't hurt his elbow. So what I do then is I slide my other arm on the inside and I go behind him. And this is my second double block. So I'm doing this kind of threading motion with my arms as I slide behind and I do the chicken wing lock and I choke with the other arm. So we're in a grappling based situation. I find an arm, a wrist. I push and I pull and I slide, look, behind to then grab his neck. And from here, it's easy to just take him down by, for example, stomping careful so you don't dislocate the shoulder. And then you might finish by pushing this hand up using your knee and then maybe apply a choke if you want to. That's up to you. The kata only shows the first part. How you finish it up is up to you. For Yondan, the fourth kata, we're gonna use also a grappling based application. Now, using the upper body, you always wanna control the inside of your opponent's arms or neck to stay in control of his movements, right? So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. But I'm gonna use these moves in the beginning of the kata. So, inside, neck control. Bicep control, doesn't matter what side because you do it on both sides in the kata. You pull and you push using your elbow. You push up, you pull down and trip over your foot. Super simple foot sweep. That's all you're doing in the beginning of the kata. It could be, for example, that your opponent is grabbing you and you're defending using this type of move. This way, for example, well, let's say I do a tie clinch. Yeah, this way. Pull down, push up, and just pick whatever side, depending on how your opponent is standing. I pull down, I push up, I move to the side, and I trip. Super simple, super effective. Let's look at that one more time. So one hand on the inside, other on the neck, up. Push up using your elbow, this way. This is the arm that goes up. This hand pulls down, you shift to the side, and you trip his front leg, so he falls to the outside. Not to this side, but to that side. Here, this way. For the last and fifth kata, we're gonna do a super simple move that you see in a lot of other kata too. And actually, these pinan katas, as they were originally called, consist of a plethora of applications and techniques taken from many other older forms. That's the way Itosu designed them, so that he can teach safer and easier alternatives to these traditional katas to school children, as he wanted to popularize karate in its birthplace. So, let's look at this move, we do a high block, and you spin your hands around and you follow up with other techniques. Something straight comes towards me and I'm gonna just cover up basically like this, using what looks like the high cross block. And then look, 
I keep this contact intact as I spin around and push down for an elbow lock. And then the next is easy. You just finish him up with the following techniques. And the cool thing about this is actually that law enforcement officers use this move with a gun and a flashlight because you're holding it like this, right? And even if you have your hands occupied, you could apply, look, let's imagine I'm holding something. You can apply the same kind of motion without grabbing your opponent. So I could theoretically be holding something in my hands because you're using that uh, connective sensitivity, that kinesthetic awareness to slide around your opponent's arm and force him down. Super simple and super effective. The key is just to have some timing. Let's look at that one more time. The original intent of the Pinan or Heian Kata was physical cultivation, but the applications of the forms can be used whenever somebody attacks you to stay safe from harm, which is the original translation of the name itself. And I hope you enjoyed that. Train hard, good luck, and have fun.